so I truly did my best to find the most relevant and the truthful information that there is about this case. I also did my own little research at the end, so stay tuned for that. And let's start now. Okay, so the Belmas faces, the Belmas faces. This is a mystery or phenomenon of very strange faces appearing on the ground of a house in the small town of Belmas. It has just under 2,000 people and it all started with just one face and then more faces started to appear, disappear. A lot of people were convinced that this is something done by a ghost and even today you can travel to Belmas and visit this house yourself. Some of the faces still exist there. Okay, now let's get to the bottom of it. So, this all started back in 1971 when a woman named Maria Gomez Camara, who was 52 at the time, saw a very strange face appearing on the concrete floor of her kitchen. And at first she thought that maybe she's just ill and she wasn't really feeling well, so she thought that she's just seeing things at first. But the face did not disappear because this face was quite unsettling. She tried to scrub it off with some cleaning detergent, some product, but the face only became more and more and more visible. So either her husband or her son destroyed the face a few days later with a pickaxe and they just laid new concrete on the original place where it, the, where the face was. But then, on September 8th, 1971, a new face began to materialize at the same exact place. And this time, the mayor of Belmas heard about it, and he decided to step in so they wouldn't destroy the face again. The face was cut from the floor and mounted on the wall behind glass. This face is called La Pava and actually this face is still in the house today behind that glass. On December 2nd, 1971, they decided to do some excavations under the kitchen because they thought that maybe there are some human remains under the floor and the ghosts are creating these faces. And they did in fact found some skeletons nine feet on the ground that were without heads. Very creepy indeed. So they took those skeletons out. They had a proper burial and they thought that that would be it, that the faces will no longer appear since the skeletons had a pr proper burial. My question is, I'm pretty sure they didn't dock out the entire kitchen floor, so chances are that under the floor there still could be a lot of human remains that did not have a proper burial. Regardless, they sealed it again with concrete 
addresses and sometimes disappearing again or they changed their appearance. The police got involved but also journalists wanted to find out what was going on here. Was this fake? Was this a hoax? So a group of investigators put together by the newspaper Pueblo was sent to the village. Pueblo published an article with the headline Se acabó el misterio, which means the mystery is solved, in which a chemical formula for the production of the faces consisting of silver chloride, silver chlorine, and ultraviolet was described, despite the fact that material analysis did not detect any traces of silver. This alleged solution of the case was rapidly adopted by the international press. As it later turned out, this article was published in response to pressure from the government, which wanted to get rid of the public turmoil caused by the faces. One important thing here is that this happened under the Francoist regime back in Spain. So the country was ruled by General Francis Franco and it was a dictatorship back then. And as you can imagine, a dictatorship does not really want these news to come out of, of these like strange paranormal faces and they probably don't want to gather international attention either. So there were a lot of cases where completely false information was published by the media. Later they even published a alleged confession that was made by a photographer from Belmas who confessed to producing these faces and it was reported by several newspapers which turned out to be completely false. The photographer did not make such a statement son later wanted to speak up against it, but he was silenced by the government, or more like he was advised not to speak about it. Also, the mayor of Belmas received a letter from the head of the government department prohibiting him to give any statement about the faces. So, this was all very hush-hush. There was a lot of contradicting information from the beginning. That being said, there were these two men that tried to do a proper investigation of these faces and they were named Bender and Arkhamosum. So they visited the village a couple of times and they performed some experiments. They believed that the faces are authentic paranormal phenomena, but not that they're caused by spirits of the dead. They believed that this, these faces were created by Maria through photography. Not photography, photography. So like thoughts. And that based on her emotions, she created these faces. So he believed that the faces were not created by ghosts, but by Maria herself. And apparently, as he was doing interviews with her, uh, she said that as a little girl, other friends, other girls, other classmates were afraid of her because sometimes things that were kind of unexplainable what happened around her dolls would start to move um, and she was just a creepy little girl in fact somebody else said that sometimes the teachers would like use Maria as a punishment so it was a punishment to spend time with Maria because she was just strange that does not prove anything though anyways in April 1972, Arkhamosa witnessed a face developing on the floor within 10 minutes, together with two reporters of the newspaper Jaén and the newspaper Patria, and also with some village 
the possibility of conducting parapsychological experiments in the original living kitchen room without disturbing their everyday life more than necessary. And he would bear half of the cost. But Bender was not a fan of this idea. He said that it would really be better to conduct such an experiment in an accurate manner instead of building new rooms which probably would destroy the occult atmosphere of the house. So technically he believed that if Maria would not work there in the kitchen, no new faces would appear. But then it says faces also appeared in the new kitchen that was built. Bender was involved with a German television station in September 1973 that wanted to create a six-episode series that would document paranormal phenomena under the title Psy. The TV's team and the director hoped with Bender's help to document audiovisual paranormal phenomena that was as exciting as possible. In the end, this did not really happen. In fact, the TV series was cancelled. Some of the footage never aired on TV because they just could not find great evidence. And I'll tell you exactly why. He tried to document a further replication of the experiment, this time without the problematic covering of the floor. The intention was to conduct interviews in front of the TV camera with the student witnesses and the two reporters who had observed the materialization of faces. Most importantly, they hoped to make spectacular recordings during the opening of the sealed room and to verify the appearance of new faces under these controlled conditions. Photographs of the single mart quadrants on the floor had been taken and the room was sealed on July 23rd, recorded by the present notary. Nevertheless, the results did not meet expectations. Again, some changes to the existing faces could be detected, and apparently one small face seemed to have disappeared in comparison with the photographs made before closing and sealing the room. However, the quality of the photographs that had been taken beforehand for comparison was too poor to allow reliable conclusions to be made about the evidence. So again, nothing basically. Bender was convinced of the paranormal quality of the phenomena, but he was forced to state technical obstacles prevented reaching intended highest level of the documentary evidence. Wait, we're not done yet, so actually after this I'm pretty sure that um, the show, the TV series was cancelled, but Bender also considered carrying out a further experiment with better controlled conditions. Probably during the third anniversary of the first occurrence of the phases. However, this experiment, which included the installation of a time lapse video camera, did not take place. So, technically, now we would have actual proof with a time lapse camera, right? But that did not happen either. So, technically, we do not have any real proof, right? And Bender never published a formal paper on his investigation and we can only speculate why there are people who said that he just had too much work and that he didn't have time to write a formal paper. Others have speculated it was because he didn't really find anything concrete So maybe he 
just didn't want to press the matter further, right? Anyways, he was not the only one who would be doing research on the faces. So also in the 70s, a man named uh, Jose Jordan, who was a vice president of the Spanish Society of Parapsychology, was also rather skeptical. And he was asked to head a commission that appointed diverse technicians specializing in concrete chemistry to carry out an exhaustive study of the strange occurrences in Balmes. And he presented a report that stated that apparently he solved this case by discovering that the faces were made by a compound that can be found at any drugstore by asking for a German product to remove concrete stains. And the mystery that the images were invisible and latent for some time is thereby solved. However, it seems like he was not able to recreate these phases. It was more of a hypothesis from what I gather. Also, this was still back in 1971 under the dictatorship of Franco. So just putting that out there. In the 90s, there was a man named Louis Ruiz Naquez that also did research and he noted that there were three cations used as pigments in the manufacture of paint. And so he believed that these faces were pretty much painted. There was zinc, lead and chromium, especially lead and chromium was said to be present in pains back then. Regardless, there was a chemical analysis performed by Instituto de Ceramica y Vidrio, also known as ICV, with samples from two of the faces. And one sample had 30 milligrams, the other 60 milligrams, and they were subjected to various tests but we don't actually know exactly what tests were performed. Regardless, here is the result of the chemical analysis. So, in both samples you could find zinc, barium, copper, chromium, phosphorus, and lead. Okay, now let's look at the chemical compound used in cement. Cement contains lime, silica, alumina, calcium sulfate, iron oxide, magnesia, sulfur, and alkalis. So we already know that there must have been some kind of chemical reaction that would create these phases. They could not just be created naturally by the cement just existing, you know, <laughs> because the, the elements are different. Besides the ICF's analysis, a man named Alonso, who was a researcher of the Spanish National Research Council, also performed an analysis, and his analysis did confirm the presence of melanocratic compound. If you don't know what that means, I didn't know either. It means that it's dark in color, containing at least 50 to 60 percent of ferromagnesian minerals. Long story short, this means that there were compounds on the cement that were metals, right? It was pretty much the same as the ICV analysis. In 2004, Maria died, and so people thought that the faces will not be appearing again since she died, and that is not the case. Apparently, though, the new faces started to appear in her childhood home, and many believe that these faces were absolutely faked. There's a theory that it was continued by her son, who was making these new faces in her childhood home. But again, we don't know for sure. Her son's name is Diego Pereira, by the way. In 2014, investigative journalism TV show Cuarto Milenio carried on a technical analysis in order to discover the possible hoax. Because keep in mind, although there are so many analysis made and research, none of the people were able to recreate these faces to say for 
originally 